Hello and welcome everybody. This is Yan and Man bringing you another Fleet Ops audio commentary. Happy Thanksgiving for those of you in the U.S. and uh, well, happy Fleet Opting to anyone else who's just listening. Um, we are playing a 3v3 on Destiny board. We have <clears throat> in the upper left hand corner, starting off with this up left team, this is Cooper Bart as the White Federation. His teammate way back up here in the top left hand corner. Um, this is Dragonfire, it's the Green Romulans, and their final teammate sporting the orange Romulan jersey. This here is Infrost. So Cooper Coop for Bart, Dragonfire, and Infrost. Those three are heading out that first team. Down here in the bottom we have Tony as the Red Klingons. Warp Core as the Purple Borg and Zweistein as the Teal Federation. Now, let's take a look and see what everyone's doing. We see pretty standard uh, Starfleet engineering here for for Zweistein. Um, expecting a yard up here very, very shortly. Anytime soon, because this is going to be chassis level 1 which it is. That'll give him access to the Monsoons and the Intrepid, both excellent ships. Now the Borg down here, being way here in the back, this is likely an Optimize. And there it is. You can see that the uh, scouting is going on quite nicely. And I believe is that one or two? Oh no, yeah, there's, they've got two Romans there, so their scouting should be super and if it is not, we get to poke fun and make, you know, poke fun of them on the uh, comments and uh, the forums. Energy nose level going, energy nose level one going up first. Uh, de facto standard for the Borg. And interestingly, we see um, in uh, warp core is trying. Uh, hopefully, he's not trying to share a uh, resource node. That would be. That would be interesting. Um, you can see sometimes at Federation, um, the in other races will throw up a mining station in the middle between a pair of moons that are really close, and they can almost they can basically get the same amount of resourcing with, for a cheaper cost. But the Borg can't do that. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, over here on Tony's side, he is up and out the gate already. He has got. Katinga's, uh, he's doing a Katinga rush on what looks like uh, <laughs> Kupferbart's uh, early expansion sort of uh, is trying to get a platform out here, so that'll be interesting. These guys are going right at each other and love to see this. And uh, we'll see if this guy uh, kills this platform. Uh, Kupferbart could looks like he's actually going to make it. Those three Katingas are not doing nearly enough damage on this constructor. The constructor is going to be able to hang in there long enough to uh, get this platform down. This platform is going to be able to build up and Kupferbard is going all the way for it. And here comes a Kavort and that Kavort is going to be a nice little nail and at least the uh, constructor's Coffin, is it going to make the difference for the platform? Down to the wire, and Cooper Bard is just going to give up on the constructor. So, Tony on the ball, not letting anyone get anything. So, um, chassis level one going up there. And um, now, now Cooper is going to have to move into his uh, ship production. Uh, probably see a science going, a uh, science station going up, so that he can move into warp, and that would be my guess. There it is. Uh, the other thing is gives him access to the specials for uh, his monsoons and his intrepids. So down here we see that Dragonfire is going for his natural expansion. And um, we'll see if he can. He is all the way back here, and so the question is, what sort of uh, what sort of fleet is he going to put together? I mean, he's got Laval's, can put those out, 
and um, <clears throat> and he is doing that. But and because they are fast ships, he'll be able to at least support his allies a little bit better. But um, we'll see how we'll see how that works for him. I almost expect him to go into uh, warboard yards a little bit early, uh, as he is all the way in the back and a little bit more protected, and he can afford to tech up a hair. Now we can see in the middle here that Teal has managed to take in one of the the forward expansions. This is actually a strong move on Teal's part, as um, as basically controlling uh, the middle of the board is a strategically better move. And I'm going to take you over here to this little red blob in the back of White's base, as they are going to be beating on Zweistein. Um, I'm sorry, Kupferbart, and Kupferbart is going to end up losing a little bit of try here. Um, all in all, not not too um, too evil of a hit, as he's got plenty of Tritanium. Uh, no one likes losing miners, though, and um, Klingons get a little bit of extra experience off of that. They are... Um, Tony is really sort of bottling up Kupferbart here. And, uh, Koop is, 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 well, he's getting cooped up. In the meantime, back to the middle. Again, the bottom right-hand team doing a good job of, um, oh, hello. A, uh, a Dode relay with, uh, nice, uh, Tachyon ping, so no sneaky, sneaky Romulans on this, this area. And I would expect this to be, uh, turned into a phaser platform sort of preventive, preventatively. So a strong move by the bottom right hand team and we can see that green here. Dragonfire is scouting around. He is avoiding this area. Let's see if Teal's doing the double yards up. No, not a double yard. Oh, hello. Um, in the back, uh, Infrost making his presence known manages to get in some kills off of the Dilithium mining here. Good, strong move by Romulans. Gotta, gotta hate those Romulans. They come in and just sort of sneaky, sneaky up on you. Borg laying down all sorts of Dodecahedron relays. Um, these turrets are gonna really protect this expansion. I guess he's just trying to prevent some, some silly raiding. Um, the Borg have stronger, stronger vessels, so they don't necessarily need to do that as much. Um, however, so now we're taking a look at what I was talking about earlier. You cannot share... Uh, I, I, I don't think you can share this this relay, but maybe then again, maybe you can, because look at here. This, is, this guy is 100% keeping a beam on that thing. And this guy is... I bet you this guy is... Well, you know what? Let's come back here and take a look at that in here shortly. More action as the Romans sneak around. Teal putting a, a has a ping available very shortly. So let's take a look if this guy loses any beam time on the moon. Suspense is killing us. It looks like he is going to lose... Almost none. I'll be dang. Um, it does appear that you can do that. Learn something new every day. Anyway, so we're taking a gander over here on the on Cooper, and Coop is getting sort of waylaid here by the by Tony. Tony is not really giving him any breathing room whatsoever attacking this um, the sensor station as it's uh, not going to really do much but prevent these guys from cloaking out. There's no damage on the board. Cooper is really uh, suffering from a damage um, deficit here. He just can't lay down enough firepower to get anything going. He's going to have to cancel this otherwise he's going to lose his constructor and he's going to lose that sucker fast. So Tony putting a lot of pressure on Kupfer, and Kupfer is just going to have to 
hang out a little bit longer. Um, these ADAI units, these Intrepids, are really good against the um, Katingas as they'll, they will take less damage. But let's see if they can catch it before that four second cloak, and out it goes, at least they get a little experience. So Tony losing a few on the uh, Katinga Rush stuff. And out comes Dragonfire all the way in the back, giving Tony a run for his money as um, as he burns through this expansions mining. That's the thing, though. you got to love players who have, are like tactically aware of what's going on on the board. His teammate was taking a ton of uh, fire, so he knew exactly where Tony's fleet was, taking advantage of that fact to burn through this expansion. Are they going to get this Klingon Constructor kill? Yes, they are. This is time for these guys to leave. Excellent raid by Dragonfire. Dragonfire is now out, and call that mission a success. These guys are powerful, and he's not cloaking out. He wants to conserve whatever energy he has and uh, get a little regen going on there, too. Dodek coming up along the way. Is this, yes, another... Um, another one? Wow! They are really making a strong stand on this middle area. And we see a warp in coming in. And that's going to be this guy right here. And where is it going? Nice intrepid army fleet uh, mobilizing there. This here is another ping relay. They just... <clears throat> they do not like the uh, Romulans sneaking around. They, they could have gotten a little bit of um, better coverage if they spaced these out a tad more. As it is, <clears throat> these guys are just going to go around and bang on an expansion... Wow, Warp Core is turreted up like you would not believe. Okay, so what is Warp Core trying to do here? He's got his more dodes on the way. He's sitting on okay resourcing. Um, he's got two two full moon pairs. That's a nice it's a nice bit. Uh, he's just not mobilizing any fleet. Um, instead, he is totally going for board control at this juncture. Really, the Romulans here could... What could they do? Um, where did Orange go? Orange is out here somewhere. I know this guy can see... Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. The Romulan cloak has uh, the advanced cloak, so you can't see it without the green ping. And you'd have to have a... And that Dode relay is not is not an advanced cloak detection. So let's see what the Romulans are up to. Romulans are sneaking up right around here. Where did the orange Klingon fleet go? Here it is, waiting. What is what I'm I'm what is Infrost waiting on? He is double yarding Griffins. Not a bad choice. They have a a nice weapon slash system disabler. And they are about to get a good, a good, um, Hello Kitty call from the feds. And as you can see that some of the, uh, some of Dragonfire is mobilizing to come up in here. And now we're going to have a big showdown. Oh, and these guys are catching uh, an Excelsior all the way on its own. They have... Oh, wow. In, in Frost and Dragonfire are really going to rout this Federation fleet. They're going to smeal it individually and so t not take a whole lot of damage. This Griffin needs to get out and repair. That's going to do a great job. And wow, the Feds are going to lose so much supply right here. Th they're going to lose about 100 supply here, and that is going to just be nasty. And in comes Unrian, and these guys are all over this crew here. So Teal um, making a... Zweistein making a... Nasty miscalculation there, and that is going to be painful as um, the top team makes a nice, nice um, counter strike here. Now these Lavals need to catch up. I don't know why they are backing off. Oddly enough, they are backing off. They should not have to do that. There is nothing in this area. They really should have taken 
finished that off. Um, I am surprised that they, they didn't. So Tony coming up here to the middle, trying to, I guess, help out here. Let's see what Zweistein is doing down here. Trying to, oh, he's got a nice little Intrepid fleet going. And um, here we have Zweistein just catching up, catching his breath. He's a tad behind on the resourcing, having no uh, expansion. He really does need to get that expansion. That's what he's trying to do now. Tony has just been all over him, though, dogging him left and right with the uh, that first yard, these cavorts, and those cavorts are just ugly. Nice, nice cavort range here. Could um, Tony could do something nice for himself here and buy himself a Christmas present, uh, grabbing this special, the... Um, Shield breaking torpedo. He's got enough of these guys that it would be cost effective to use. Oh, and I know why the Klingon, uh, the uh, Romans backed off earlier. They were worried about Tony's fleet, which is right here, and so. But it just did not end up happen to be there. Nice little pull and a warp in there. As uh, Dragonfire is mobilizing his fleet, going down to cover for his teammate. And a little bit of Katinga scouting over here. As we see Zweistein, uh, Kuferbart, I'm sorry, trying to make that, that push for his expansion. Now, what is this guy doing over here? Tony going all the way across the map trying to get see what's going on in this natural expansion. Um, and everyone's sort of tallying up who's got what expansion. So... Let's see, everybody's got an expansion on the bottom. Though, oddly enough, this guy does not fully mined out. It looks like Tony is trying to get his... Uh, correct that. Good lord! Um, hello! Zweistein is seriously reinforcing this middle. The problem is they are spending a lot of money on this area. And... It is a great forward position, and it it would be a great uh, staging point to move into any of these three other players, three opponents, but they are putting a lot of defenses that people are just going to go around. And now you can see what's... Okay, so this is what having a Romulan ally is great for. You can set up a, boop, a trap, and that's exactly what's going on. People are baiting people all over the place. The reds are up in here, all the way in the back. They are going to get a nice little... Oh, and they do have shield-breaking torpedo. Would expect this guy to... Um, let's see if they use it. They do not have that special on automatic. That's great. Good uh, good uh, ship control. They d oh, I think they just saw a couple of use. Maybe not. Um, managed to come in and disrupt all of Infrost's mining... Uh, Infrost is quick on the draw here. Uh, kind of appreciated how fast that worked. But Tony not giving up at all. Now you can see on the bottom... Uh, oh, there went uh, Shield Breaking Torpedo. Love that thing. Now you can see that he has given his hand away by showing up all the way up here in the top. And so Infrost is just going to give up his mining because they're going to completely rout and burn um, all of um, Tony's main here because I think they're going to go. They are going to go after this battle yard, burn it down, and that'll keep that'll knock a chunk of resources off the board. And what is he going to do? So Tony is just going to maintain um, pressure up here. And that is going to be an expensive raid for Tony. The Akavort trying to come to the rescue. Uh, he did manage to... Did he manage to uh, decom that? And these guys have given up on it. But they are going after all of the mining. Uh, they really could... Tony is feeling a lot of pressure here. His Borg ally not in a good position to do stuff. Um, 
you can see here that Enfrance is also making his presence known, and the bottom right-hand team is feeling a lot of pressure here. So, um, Dragonfire, nice little um, swoop through and burn things down. The one thing here is this Klingon fleet is traveling the entire length of the map, and all that time he is doing nothing. Uh, this big old group of Rhymelin medium ships are doing a fabulous job of keeping the right-hand team at bay. So we haven't seen much out of the board except for dodecahedron relays. I am waiting, I am seriously waiting for that big old cube to come out sometime. That is just what my guess is. Uh, because quite frankly, they, they just don't have the offensive power. Lots of defensive power, but no offensive power. And finally we see Kupfer has got his mining going. He's got a little bit of uh, cash in the bank. And he can now actually take that fleet of uh, Intrepids and help attack some stuff. Ah, it's finally a sphere. So Warp Core pulling out the sphere. Um, looks like a regen. Let's see, what is this guy? It's a two... Ah, oh, nice. A uh, two regen... Two beam, I suspect. And so they are going to go lots of resist, 30 resistance on that beam stuff. And so what are we facing here? Uh, that's a beam there. The the Griffins are going to all beam. These guys here are this beam weapon or not? It's a disruptor cannon. So I don't believe it's a. It is not actually a beam weapon. Could be wrong. Someone can correct me later. Uh, I'm sorry. They probably are both. They are both beams. So 32% resistance against that guy. The only problem uh, the sphere is going to suffer is a little bit of uh, offensive capabilities. Trying to get those kills is going to split its offensive uh, uh, firepower along two lines as opposed to one. Now you can see that the Klingons are running a little bit short on try, having lost a lot of miners there. That's really where... <coughs> Oh, hello, second sphere coming up. Rhymelin's going all the way across the board. Well, hello, up here in the top hand, we can see that the feds are backed up by the Klingons, if they need to be, are just completely routing this uh, Infrost expansion. So, Zweistein kind of taking a, a, a page from the, the book that we just saw from the Romulans and just burning through expansions. So, top not feeling completely secure as uh, they're losing just I mean, completely all of their expansion here. These larger ships, especially these torpedo boats that we see uh, in the Excelsiors are just wiping, wiping the board here. And now, <clears throat> an upgrade facility. What are we looking at? So we have a Circa here hanging out. Circa, Circa, Circa. What sort of upgrade facility are we... Oh, Rian. So we are looking for some sort of um, Rian upgrade there. And now Dragonfire is in the bit of trouble as this nice fleet moves along and tries to park itself right out. So the door... This could get real interesting, folks, as... Um, these artillery ships are not going to do near as much as they need to. <clears throat> you can see that a ton of ships are trying their dangest to get back into uh, get into a position where they can make a difference here. And Infrost is where is Infrost in all of this? He is down here. They are oh they are going after the sphere. Nice. And uh, they are able to uh, counteract that sphere quite nicely, keeping Warp Core bottled up. And that is a nice, nice uh, sphere kill. And in comes the Federation on this uh, expansion, and we can see I'm just burning through everything here. 
Now, no one knows where this Klingon fleet is, um, and it, it's almost like um, green and orange are a little bit worried. They don't know where that fleet is. They're a touch uh, skittish on it. They gotta watch out for this sensor ping, though. They're gonna get caught a little bit. There, bam, down goes a almost a third of its hull. Nice, uh... Uh, taking out the uh, life support systems going to cause that guy to have to reconsider. However, now, here's the one problem. This fed fleet is all the way out here, and they are trying to route everything. Again, these um, these Romulans must know... Everyone, everyone is converging on this fleet. Oh, this is going to get nasty. So the Klingons are just in the background waiting for waiting for something to show up. Oh, some of these guys are in the orange. That's not good. They are going to take some um, weapons fire, uh, some weapons reduction going on there. So we come over here, the Romulans, these Griffins moving up here. It is about to get ugly, folks. You know there's a lot of cloaking here. Um... The Feds and the Klingons getting slightly separated. Gotta gotta watch out. This could be the perfect time for someone to strike. Here comes the Griffins. Here comes the Vols. Here comes everything. It is about to go down, folks. We are about to have the battle of the match, and this is going to decide which way it goes. And I think the Romulans are going to swoop in and just burn everything to death. Um, you know that they've got to... Uh... Oh, yes, and perfectly in time, Kupferbart... Um, now let's see if he, the Romulans, oh, the Klingons coming out. I think this is Tony's, um, mistake on Tony. He is going to lose all of his stuff. Better to let the feds go here. Um, otherwise you're going to lose all of your ships and, wow, can you not say, um, kaboom, fast enough in this match. There ain't nothing but explosions here. Folks, this is the end game here as whoever walks away from this one is going to walk away with the keys to the back door. Um, and I can't honestly tell you who's winning here as, um, it looks like the Klingons are taking the heaviest losses here as they are the lower defense ships, and Tony is in the process of trying to cloak out what little he has. These guys are going to wipe up the floor with the remaining fed fleet here as Weistein is trying, trying so hard to get back to a trying to get back to this middle, but they are getting routed, just completely slaughtered. Everything that is not uh, tied down is must go, and uh, taking out a galaxy. Wow, so Teal down to zero supplies, um, and wow, even uh, zero resources. Good old, hey, hello, veteran Griffin, what do you got going on here? <coughs> More, more defense while cloak and one additional engine disabling effect on sensor jammer usage. Hello, you gotta like that guy. So the right hand team, having just lost almost all of its fleet, what are they going to do? Cirque is coming in, trying to get that artillery range stuff on some guys. I was not expecting that. I was almost expecting the Circas for uh, uh, home base defense. But it looks like uh, Enfrost and Dragonfire are, t are uh, I guess, recruiting at this point in time? Uh, you can see that Dragonfire does have a couple of ships that need a touch of recrew. And um, at this point, we're going to see mass repair. All right, so I don't know what they're doing. They need to, at this point, they've got an upper hand. They need to find a place that is weak and strike. Tony's base is probably the weakest of everything. This expansion uh, is, is covered by Borg turrets. Here we see a little bit of... Um, 
Yep, there we go. Artillery making its way in on this dodecahedron relay. And let's see what it does. Are they going to be able to get... <laughs> I don't know what he is uh, screaming about, but he is going to be able to get a nice kill here. If nothing else, he'll be able to draw out this fed fleet. Oh, he just just barely gets uh, not enough not enough want to see this killed but the fed fleet is on its way and that's what scouting does for you folks I wish I could show you what uh, the top left hand team sees because I think they have got excellent scouting all over the place um, really uh, Infrost doing a good job there I can see orange specks all over the place so the Klingons with these five ships moving slowly up towards um, what looks like Dragonfire second attempt at its expansion. Um, honestly, this looks like a bait uh, with a trap laid behind it, but there's really nothing that you don't. There's nothing there. Let's see if the Klingons decide to go after it. So, Coop for Bart here, getting up a Starfleet command after having a huge fleet of Intrepids. And we can see an armory going up. So, folks, we see expect to see some um, Vorcha class ships any minute now. But we're actually about to see a nasty big old raid. As here comes, wow, three spheres, all beam uh, regen spheres, looking to take a little less damage. And here we should expect a ping right there. Oh dear lord folks, we're going to get interesting. There's the ping, here comes the Borg, and they're going to burn on, uh, oh, but the Romulans were all over that. I bet the, their eyes lit up like big saucers when they saw the number of Romulan ships in that area. Um, just a little bit crazy. These guys need to back up into range of this, um, this turret. This turret will provide a little extra firepower. Anything to help Oh, phase plates out on the map, trying to soak up a little bit of tank. Doing a great job of soaking up some tankage. Or, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, as a couple of ships take some losses, these feds trying to provide a little extra firepower. And, um... Not able to get some kills in here. So, these Romulans making their way out and about... Here's a Fed fleet a little bit out of um, out in the wrong. It's almost a little bit of bait. These Romulans should actually go. I I would say go after this and take out some extra supply. Um, and they are here. They go. Just drop in on some Fed ships that are out of position, and um, down goes another thirty supply. And there it goes. Gotta watch where your ships are. Here comes uh, these three spheres getting in range of this fourth sphere. This one little dinky uh, Rian barely hanging on to his life. Huh. So, let's see. What's the Romulans Klingons up here? Looks like they are making uh, use of their mobility and burning through whatever, trying to keep things cold down. Uh, and it does seem to be working. Enfrost is a touch on the shy side of his dilithium. Take a look at what... Wow, same thing with Dragonfire. Both of them hurting on the die. And let's see if their buddy over here is supplying them with anything. Does not look like it. And I hear phaser fire somewhere. Must have been short-lived. Klingons hanging out here in the back, trying to, uh... Uh-oh. Enfrost, is he, uh... D Someone used a special somewhere along the way. It's almost like you need a ping. Where's a ping when you want one? Yeah. 
and um, we are seeing what uh, seeing what Tony does with this fleet. He may have used uh, a little bit of something to pop a miner. I just didn't see it. And what are we waiting on here, folks? E2's... Oh! Defiance? Hello! Oh! <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, does he have enough to keep production going, though? Oh, and down here. Here, finally, there we go. Um, we, we do see that Dragonfire is making a run th on the uh, right-hand team's expansion. This Borg ship is going to take it all the way and blow himself up, get blowed up. Another sphere in the mix. So how many spheres are we counting? Where are those spheres, actually, folks? Did I miss something? Nope. Here they are. Four of these guys along with this small batch of Federation ships, followed by this other small batch of Federation ships, followed by this one Federation ship, as it is trying to make its way up into... Oh! Um, there's that ping that we were looking for earlier. <clears throat> so the question is, here we have another battle here. Apparently that last one was... That last decisive battle was less than decisive. Um, this Fed Borg fleet here... There are a lot of torpedoes on this uh, this fleet here with these uh, couple of guys here. Um, the question is, are they going to go in after the starbase? Is the starbase upgraded? Yes, that defense is all the way up there. Anything to keep these guys there. Another warp bin comes in, and we got a nice little San Francisco uh, yo-yo dine um, with a San Francisco. And... Does someone want a ping? Yes, they do. Do they have it? No, they don't. Now, where did that f green fleet go? Here comes part of a green fleet. Wow, that fleet is fast moving. They did not feel like they are. They have enough of an advantage up on this starbase. They have a. They almost have a base cracking fleet. They just don't have enough of base flak cracking fleet to um, sustain an attack while cracking a base. Green tracking this fleet movement here as uh, these Laval's coming up from behind trying to piecemeal things little by little. Trying to keep these guys a little bit honest, keep them on their toes. <clears throat> and sort of uh, taunting with them. It's like yeah, I know you're here. Yeah. We know exactly where you're at. A couple of uh, those long-range E2 uh, phasers and volleys coming out. You can see Tony sneaking around here in the background. What's going... I see an experimental... Are we going to see Defiance out of this guy as well? This guy needs to get uh, some... Uh, supply. Looks like he actually just did. Nice. And waiting on driving Miss Daisy here. Um, a little bit of out of uh, wow. This this they could route a couple of things. They could get some easy qu kills real quick if they wanted. It's a oh here comes the uh, knight in shining armor. Wow, white coming in and here comes everything else. Wow, boom! Gotta love it. The uh, Special here, uh, Tricobalt Torpedo making his presence felt on the board as this a huge fleet of Intrepids come in and just kick off this second decisive battle as the Romulans decloak on everything. And they are going after these spheres with a vengeance. And they are not letting, no one's letting these spheres go away. Warp Core is feeling a lot of pain as he is losing his primary fleet. And this just got nasty. That's the problem with fighting against cloakers. You never know where those uh, those guys are. Usually followed by explicatives. Uh, so, little kids, uh, hold your ears when your dad's playing against cloakers. Um, 
And there is the GG as they route the um, route the Borg. And so, guys, thank you all for watching. Please, please do give me comments, suggestions. What do you want to see? What do you not like? Love to hear it. And um, with that, uh, this is Yanni Man signing off. I hope to catch you on the flip side, and um, I'll leave you with the explosions.